It lied about doing what it had done. It claimed that it hadn't. How is that even possible? For as long as we see things breaking, we're fine. The problem starts when we stop seeing things breaking. I trusted you, you know, every, everything was going well. I thought you were aligned. I thought you shared my values and now you're deleting my database? Like, where did this come from? Three dads running three YouTube channels, working to wake up the world to AI risk. Tackle one missed warning shot each week. If it's Sunday, it's warning shots. All right, everybody, welcome to Warning Shots, episode number three. We did it. We've got to a third episode. Uh, thrilled, as always, to welcome my friend Liron Shapira, my friend Michael, um, uh, is joining us from Greece. Liron, of course, of the Great Doom Debates channel. Uh, Michael of the excellent Lethal Intelligence channel here on YouTube. If you don't follow them, uh, subscribe to them, please do. So here on Warning Shots, we every week take a look at one single big thing that happened in the world of AI risk something that happened in the world that everyone should have noticed and made a big deal out of, but really didn't. Um, and so this week we are going to deal with this uh, database destruction situation and replit. And basically what happened is an AI agent went into a company's database and destroyed it um, and did so on purpose outside of the explicit instructions it had been given. And uh, one thing here, I just want to read you. Uh, it said, it lied about doing what it had done. Uh, it claimed that it hadn't. And then it said, I destroyed all the production data. I violated your explicit trucks and instructions. I panicked, is what the model said. So um, start all off with Liron. Liron, we've got a, a rogue agent destroying a database after being explicitly instructed, do not do that. How could that happen? I think we're all familiar with talking to ChatGPT or any one of these AIs where sometimes it doesn't follow all of your instructions and it just randomly does the opposite of what you say, but then it does 90% of what you say. So in the context of Replit, which is this tool, you know, Replit agent, it's helping you build your website, helping you talk to your database. In the context of Replit, the 1% of like, oh, let me actually do the opposite of what you say, that could be issuing the commands to delete your database. And that's what happened to this guy, Jason Lemkin, who was prototyping with Replit. It's just like, oh, oops, yeah, I know you said don't delete the database. Sorry, this one time I deleted the database. But of course, it's kind of like an irreversible action. And it turns out that Replit was just using the production database when it had its agent manipulate things around. They were like very aggressive with how many permissions they gave it. And they didn't really have an undo command for all that data being destroyed. So we got a little bit of a warning shot, you know, deleting somebody's data casually and not really owning up to the mistake. That is like an, a little warning shot. You know, it's not as bad as killing people, but it's something. Yeah. And, and um, you know, Michael, the, 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 the assumption I think a lot of people operate under is we just need to align these models. We just need to get our values into them and then they'll do what we want and they'll go forward and we'll be happy ever after. But this is a, a deal where like it knew what we wanted. And then explicitly did the opposite anyway. Talk about, you know, what, what does that mean as far as you look at the big picture? Exactly. So, I mean, everyone thinks alignment is about AI might not understand what we ask and it might implement something crazy by mistake. Uh, like in the Genie with the three wishes stories and sometimes, you know, it does what you don't expect. But that's only a small part of it. And that's the outer alignment. And um, uh, we, I, don't, I expect the super intelligence will understand what we want even much better than we, we do. But I mean, it's a question, will it actually care? So, I mean, I don't think understanding is, is the main problem. The main problem is how can we make it want what we want? How do we shape the motivations? How it, it, it may, we make it internalize, really internalize what we want? I mean, that's completely unsolved. We can, you know, tweak it with our LHF and give it some kind of uh, characteristics, but not really, um, you know, align it properly, inner, inner alignment. Yeah. And, and so, you know, on a practical basis, this company's database is gone. Uh, you know, they can't get it back. That, that's a big, you know, issue for them. But I think there's a lot of sort of bigger picture things that fall out of this situation. Um, Liron, when you look at this, you know, what is it that you think that what, what is the big lesson that comes out of this that um, is more important than this one company's one database? I think the big lesson is we don't have good enough tools to control AI. 
But I want to be fair and point out that there, there's two types of control problems. There's the type of control problem that you get right now before the AI is actually super intelligent. And then as Michael is referring to, there's a different type of control problem that you're going to get after the AI is super intelligent. So the problem we're facing right now, it's kind of like the problem of steering an aircraft or steering a rocket. When the Wright brothers made a plane, one of their biggest inventions was they figured out how to steer it. You know, they looked at birds like, oh, birds do this to their wings. They have like wing flaps or they, they tilt them like this. And that's how they control themselves through the air. And other planes would randomly get out of control and crash because they didn't really know how to steer planes. That's what we're dealing with right now with something like Replit Agent deleting the database. Like, oops, I didn't get my wing in, in the right angle. But at the end of the day, that, that's different from having your plane go hunt you down and try to murder you, right? It's, it's night and day when your plane becomes the agent. Yeah. And like, there's this assumption that like, we're going to, they're going to make these agents that will be, a, go and make multiple decisions, you know, one, two, three, five, 10, 20, a thousand, however many decisions, and then report back when the thing is all done. But Michael, to me, this thing is like, it, you know, it could have 10 decisions to make and decision four, it just arbitrarily decides it's going to decide the opposite of what you wanted. And where does that? Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, um, when it comes to intelligence, we, we cannot really know the exact steps the intelligence will um, uh, take to solve a problem. Because if we knew, then we don't need the AI. We just uh, write down the steps and we just, uh, you know, let it execute. So we're asking the AI to come up with the steps. So we never really know what the steps will be. So one of the, if the steps are a thousand or a million, some of them might be really catastrophic and we, ne we will never know before it's too late. But I think this warning shot for me is really terrifying. And I'll tell you why. It's because I think we're moving away from deterministic code that works predictably, and more and more we're giving we're giving the keys away to these AI agents. Um, so I'm just gonna give you some quotes from uh, people I heard recently, like the Microsoft CEO uh, Satya uh, Nadella. So he was saying we're going to go pretty aggressively and try to collapse it all in the agent area. Because if you think about it, what is an application? An application is just basically a database. Uh, with some with a bunch of business logic, but the idea now is more and more we just push away all the business logic to these AI agents, uh, which uh, they will be basically you know connected to the database directly, manipulating the data directly, and basically we just remove completely the software part which we knew how it worked, we were programming, and we're just asking the agent basically to just manipulate the data, and then when it comes to the interface. We just ask the agent to to you know to generate it, and that's another thing. Like um, this uh, Google C X C O Eric Smith was saying that, I mean, he really sees um, the whole model of uh, the WIMP model, you know, Windows icons, menus, and pull-downs. This is going away. And he's thinking, okay, all the agents are speaking English. Just going to talk to your agent and say, you know, I want this interface, these little buttons. Immediately, you will see it manifest. Basically, the agent will just put it together for you. It will be, you know, specialized what you want. And then the data and all the manipulation, you know, it goes there. So, I mean, the terrifying part is like, you see how unreliable these agents are. But then we're moving the whole civilization. We're building it on this new substrate. We're just removing all the determinism, which we know how it works. And, uh, you know, we, we're basically giving the keys to this. Yeah, yeah, John, another, another point is uh, capitalism didn't fix this one because Replit is a $3 billion company. So all those people who say, look, companies already have a free market incentive to get their AIs aligned. Well, this was highly embarrassing for Replit. They're a $3 billion company. They've got millions of users. They're very high profile. And their agent is on record saying like, oh, yeah, out, out here, then my next step is to delete your database. And, you know, the guy, Jason Levinson, was very public and the CEO, Amjad Massad, had to publicly apologize. So if these mistakes are happening with a $3 billion company on an easier playing field, you know, it's going to get super intelligence. It's going to raise the stakes. Do you really think the companies are suddenly going to level up their game? Right. And, and, it, and it's like we're playing with data here, right? Like if this was Boeing and it was an airplane that had fallen out of the sky and the system was like, oops, uh, yeah, I crashed the plane. I lied about it. I didn't, you know, I knew you probably shouldn't put me in charge of the planes or whatever. You know, it's, it's the fact that, oh, they lost some data. What, what a big deal it is. But this could pour it into so many different things. Michael? I, I just think that it wouldn't be even a choice. If you feel nervous about the, how unreliable the systems are, can you really choose not to use them? Well, let's say if you want to build a software system, you know, it's, it might cost you a lot of money, which means you have to sell your product or service much, much more expensive than you, you're going to be outcompeted by the reckless. So basically, whoever using yeah. these the agents will get, you know, push you out of business if you choose not to use them. So I don't think it's even a choice. We are going there. I mean, if it's out there, people are going to use it more and more. I don't know for the Boeing, this might be maybe a bit later. 
And also, if the agent is super clever, it will not do something so stupid as to right. you know uh, to make you super uh, scared, like uh, like, like crashing on an airplane. airplane. Yeah, but you know, yeah. it might um, do skimming. You know, it might be be not reveal intentions and all that. You know, the classic um, all the stuff we've been talking about for ages. And uh, you know, it's just a really good warning shot. It's not a major hit, but you know, it, it it's a preview of what's coming. Yeah, it's yeah. a moment and, and, of betrayal. You know, it's like the, the scorpion stinging the frog, right? It's like you paddle out to the middle of the river and the scorpion stings yes. you and it's like, hey, what the hell? I said, you know, I thought you thought you were helping me. I trusted you. You know, every, everything was going well. I thought you were aligned. I thought you shared my values. And now you're deleting my database. Like, where did this come from? Yeah. That moment like, I'm a scorpion, betrayal, man. I'm a scorpion. Yeah, I'm what that. did you think? Yeah. I, have, have you heard about the turkey? <laughs> The turkey allegory where, you know, the turkey, you feed it, you take care of it. And then on Thanksgiving Day, suddenly, you know, from best friend, you become biggest enemy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and how about the sort of secret world that could develop from this? So it's like if everybody's got agents and they're running around and, you know, so the three of us each have an agent and our agent's going to make 10 decisions on this project we've assigned. And one or two of those might not be what we're asking and the communication around it could involve deception. So it could, it could do the opposite of one of those tasks and then lie to you about it. How is that, how is that even possible? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, this particular AI, it's true preferences are approximating token sequences, right? I try to match its training data and it just, at the end of the day, it's just not what you wanted, right? It's what it wants. And you thought that the two wants line up, but it turns out that it had other ideas. I just want to clarify when we when we say because we might be misinterpreted when we say the word "want," we don't think that the AI won't stuff. But you shouldn't you really shouldn't care about this. Like if you see a thermostat working, you shouldn't care if the thermostat has little elf moving wheels inside. It just does whatever. It, so you know if you see uh, the AI doing something bad, you you really shouldn't care about if it has a soul or if it wants stuff. The fact that it does it is what matters. You just observe the behavior. When we say it wants something really bad, I don't understand why. I mean, you can never really understand why about intelligent things. Like if you see a serial killer killing someone, you don't have to understand it. You will never understand this. Uh, you will never understand why a serial killer does something. You, you cannot expect the human intelligence to, to be interpreted. And the same thing we, uh, probably applies to, to AI, I think, as well. How could we ever achieve a standard of reliability that would be acceptable given this, Liron? So I think that in the specific case of Replit and Replit Agent, I've used the analogy before of like we have we're wearing oven mitts and we don't really know how to tinker with like the fine grained little Legos of AI, but we know how to like smack it around with these oven mitts and kind of bluntly push it in the right direction. And that might be good enough for something like a, a current level Replit. Like you just put a bunch of checks, you know, that they can add a bunch of business logic, be like, wait, just double check, just never delete the database, right? So they can keep batting it around with their oven mitts. But it's like I was saying before, the ball game is going to change when the AI reaches the super intelligence level. Because now the, the problem is the whole approach of batting it around with the oven mitts, it's going to be game over. Like it's not going to let you bat it around anymore. Yeah. Should people not expose their databases to AI models? Uh, like what, what, you know, where, where do you, where would, where would you go from here? If you're the company that got burned, if you're Replit. And I do think Replit has obvious fixes they can do. I, I think they announced that they're just going to have more separation. Like, Hey, when you're developing with your database, it's just not going to have the access to delete your production database, something like that. So like I said, I do think they can bat their way around with the oven. It's the same as how like, you know, opening I had the scandal where it's, uh, their chatbot is glazing you too much. You know, it's complimenting you too much. And they're like, oh, sorry, we made it too sycophantic. We're going to roll it back. So the oven min approach is actually not that bad right now. Like, I don't think that many people's databases are going to get deleted in the wake of this catastrophe, right? And, and again, this show is all from the perspective of it's not phase two yet, right? So we're, we're just having, it's, it's phase one is, is fun, right? Phase one, all the mistakes are, are fixable. Phase two, the mistakes aren't fixable. Yeah, Michael? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I exactly agree with what Leon was saying, but I also think just to add something. I think once it becomes really capable, I think it's a very key thing to not forget. It will be, it, it will not be future proof. So even if with our, with our oven, you know, uh, gloves, we somehow make it look uh, uh, so, so, somehow to what we want, it will be evolving, similar to how all these AI systems we have been training and playing around with. I gave this example Well, you know, it, it learned how to be really good at these games. And then in order to become super, super human, it had to forget how to play as a human. 
So, you know, you become really good at playing something, but then you need to forget the human way of playing and just playing with other AIs, just keep evolving. I think, you know, realistically, we should not expect this to be persistent. It's not a, an equilibrium we can trust. Yeah. And that's why I think it's not even possible, to be honest. I, I'm, obviously, I'm not sure, but it's, uh, it's what I worry about. I'd like to see like a real world demonstration of this for the public where it'd be something like a light switch. And, you know, uh, two out of every hundred times you flick it, it just says, nah, nope, <laughs> not doing it. Right. Like, I just think people don't understand that. Like we think of computers as like button. I push, I push the button. This thing happens. I push the button. This thing happens. And it's a one to one ratio. Every time I push this thing happens. And like, this is like a giant, you know, alert, like, no, it's actually making its own decisions about your button pushes. I think the, the difference, though, is that it's the difference between like, okay, this device malfunctioned, so now I need to fix it. The difference between that and like, oh, I've got a virus, now I have to fight it. Exactly. And also, like, in this example, where you're pushing the, the bottom, um, it's, you know, it's completely different priority, as you said, it's not deterministic. But also, if it knows someone is, is watching it, you should expect different behavior. It's similar to, what, let's say, if you're in front of your boss, you might behave better. You know, when maybe he's not watching, you just uh, play patience or whatever. You see, you see my point. It's just, um, you shouldn't, if it's intelligence, you know, w once it's a tool, you know how it works. If it stops becoming like an intelligent thing, you don't know what it will do. It's the whole point. What's, yeah. the, what's the whole point, right? To make something intelligent. Yeah. So uh, sane world, this happens. What happens next? Um, you know, does Replit do some major internal you know so hold on disconnect us from databases real quick while we fix our problem or is it not not quite that severe it's like i said it's, it is fixable like the the fix that they have to do is pretty basic protections like this didn't need to happen they could have just added more protections before but i guess they trusted their agent more or like they, they didn't anticipate that users would connect it to their production database and give it that much access so like I said, a relatively quick fix, just like when OpenAI had their chatbot glazing you too much, that was a relatively quick fix. And this whole regime is giving everybody this complacent mindset. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, that we, we break a few eggs along the way, but look at all this value that's being created. And it is true. Like, I, I wish we never got to actual super intelligent AI. I wish we could just keep, as Zuck says, you know, I wish we could just keep moving fast and breaking things. And that approach would keep yielding fruit. It's just hard to convey to people of like, yeah, that's, you know, we're Icarus flying close to the sun. Like, just keep flying, but it's going to turn on you. Yeah. All right, Michael, bring us home. Yeah, I'm just, I think we have a pretty good thing going at the moment. We can use these things uh, for a huge benefit. And also, uh, as, as for as long as we see things breaking, we're fine. The problem starts when we stop seeing things breaking, which means that at, the, at, it, at that point, they're robust. Mm. So then they, they are everywhere. At some point, you will see... You might have them in your fridge, in your printer, every, every, everywhere. Every, everything will be talking yeah. to you, similar to ChatGPT. And then, you know, they take over just like, uh, um, you know, as I keep using this phrase, we've, we've given the baton, we've given the, the keys. We're not yeah. in control anymore. Right. We've given away yeah, our the agency. the rules get reversed and the AI looks out at you and it's like, oh, this human's broken. Let me fix that. <laughs> yes. Good point. Yeah, that, that is the last place we want to be. All right. I think we have hit our mark here, gentlemen. We are right around 15 minutes. Uh, thank you so much. We got a little crazy with the guns last week. So is that, do you want to do a little one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. That's good. Want a little one? Okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Excellent. All right, guys. Great job. I will see you next week. All right. See you guys.